All right, so <coughs> this is Monsters in Chronicles, the uh, long-awaited sequel for uh, Book of Dread. Now, this came out a while ago, for a long time ago. I remember playing Book of Dread and waiting a long time, anxiously waiting for this game to come out. And it came out, and I inexplicably didn't play it. Oh, I, I tried playing it, but I swear to God that... It doesn't seem to have this, but I swear that it had microtransactions. Like, to unlock certain characters, you actually had to pay. Or something like that. I don't remember. Well, and it has a different art style. Let's just get in the game, and you'll be able to see it for yourself. So, you remember what the, uh, old Book of Dren uh, Dread looks like? Uh, huh? Oh? You know what, uh, the previous game looked like? Alright, so now look at what it is like this. <laughs> God damn, Armor Games intro is loud. <clears throat> and that's a problem I have right there. Bring uh, freaking DLC. <laughs> Actually, I haven't seen what it is. Oh, yeah, you do have to fucking pay to unlock these things. <sighs> Fuck you. The game. Yes, let's resume my old game. So. Uh, this is the new, this is what it is now. You may be like, hey, this is similar. It is, but it's more finicky. Um, there's been a lot of problems with this. A lot of people, like, when you would spawn on a floor, sometimes, uh, like, you'll go to the room just after the stairwell, and then you'll just appear in this blackness, and you won't be able to move. <coughs> so let's show you the com- well, actually. First, let's show the inventory, because it's a right mess. Alright, so, get this. You're now forced to buy a bigger backpack, which is a good... Well, it's a good thing that you can now have a bigger backpack, because, let's be honest, the old backpack was fucking tiny with its capacity, but they decided to make no item stack. Look at all this shit. The, all, all, all the health potions, revival potions, they no longer stack. Why? Probably just to make you waste more of your gold. One thing I really like, though, is you just have to drag items up here to sell them now, rather than having to have a specific item to be able to go to the Emporium, and you can actually go right there. However, instead of, um, new items being there every... Instead of new items being there every, um, level, you now have to go down here and pay to, uh, get new items. Even worse is pay 350 gold, unlock tier 2 items. For one, the, the items it uh, uh, does from the, gives from this are completely random. Most of the time, they're completely useless. Because they're significantly worse than the items you already have. Uh, two, just you have to go through the campaigns to get higher tiers. Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, etc. <sighs> you see why I'm disappointed with this game? Now, let's get to the combat. Again, I refer you back to uh, what the combat was in the last game. And see what it's like here. You can already see where this is going. One thing I like though is that you can click here to examine, like I want to examine this page. They actually have descriptions for all of them. So I like that. So, you may be seeing um, Let's go with what I usually start the thing with. You know, I really wish I was, um... Okay. You see how this level is going? Well, actually, it goes 
relatively quick on the, uh... <clears throat> it goes relatively quick when I don't have panic ammo, but still. And even though... Okay, just keep in mind, this is at the fastest speed that you can have it. And look how fucking slow it goes. There needs to just be, like, a skip turn button thingy. Like, yeah, uh, like, say, you start to move, click, so it automatically does everything that it would do. Except you don't have to wait for the fucking animation. Oh my god. Also, they changed uh, some things. Like, they changed what pin does. It always will stun an enemy no matter what. Which is kind of weird. And Force of Nature, where rather than a ten attack, is now a stance. Oh my god, I was having serious problems with this on the first floor because, well, the first quest, which was nothing but cultists. And, uh, well, they're a little fucking cheap, let's just say. Even worse, it, well, it's not exactly worse, but it's something kind of annoying. Um, the bosses, the final bosses in uh, Book of Dread and the Monsters Den, she just damaged herself, what the fuck? never seen her do that. Um, they had their own particular theme that would play while you fight them, like Dreadfather or Corruptor would have their own theme. Um, now it plays whenever you're fighting a boss creature, no matter what. And the worst part about it, the boss creatures are retardedly easy. I mean, it's weird for me to say that, seeing how I want everything to be as easy as possible. But, yeah, I really should have gone for that one because he's about to attack. Don't hit the cleric. Well, now we're fucked. <sighs> so, yeah, we still have the same problem that we do in the other one. So, we have no holy warrior. Also, the ranger seems to have a ridiculously high chance to miss any enemy in the back row. There was one, one of the cultist uh, fights I was in. Uh, quest. I was trying for literally, I shit you not, five minutes straight trying to shoot the back row, and they constantly dodged. Uh, fucking hell, let's go for that guy. So, do you see why I decided not to play this game for years? For some reason, every time they strike me, I seem to get a Also, it seems to be hard now to tell who's gonna go next. Well, you, I like over here. It, it shows these guys. You think that would be the order? But it doesn't seem to do that sometimes. Cause, like, uh, like say it says that ranger guy is gonna go next. I wouldn't be surprised if she would go next. It's just annoying, to say the least. Did I use a power attack for that? Yeah, I did. I assume he would have more health. And the annoying thing is still here where you have to, uh... There we go again. Can't hit the back row. Um, you have to clear out the entire front row before you're able to attack the back row. And seeing how a lot of your characters are melee based, that's a very, very big problem. I thought he wasn't gonna move. I, but on the upside, you, uh get some abilities, like, at the start of the game, as opposed to have to unlock them yourself. Like, uh, he, uh, the warrior automatically learned, uh, power attack and whatever the hell is. Also, something really annoying. I named him. I named my warrior Blade, just like I always do. And that's what it gave his name as. I even saved the changes, and it still didn't save it. Although there's been a lot of reports of uh, people's games and, pl and characters not saving. I just realized, um, our cleric got XP even though she's dead. You're gonna have to be using the shrines a lot more because of how powerful the enemies like to be. Move. Oh, also, you see this thing here? Potential ambush? You'd think if you go through the room once and it doesn't, there's no ambush, you'd be fine. But no, it's a random chance. 
like I went through there this way the first time there was nothing there I unlocked the doors went back through there was nothing there went through again there was like an entire party full of enemies so yeah just skill of centuries hmm. I haven't seen them yet just like the last game, I kind of, who I almost, uh, I kind of prefer to uh, explore every area before I start fighting stuff. What the hell are those? I don't know. Let's just see if we have anything new in our inventory. New? Come on. I just accidentally fucking did that because of lag. So I just sold my what is it? Alertness thing potion. Thanks, lag. So I don't know what this is. Let's see. Oh, there's the exit. Necromancer. Ooh, that's a serious problem. There's environmental hazards now, and, um... Well, you can see how bad this one is. There's also one that's rather relatively common. What was it called? Dank Puddle. No, no, that's Dank Puddle. Foul Miasma, I think it is. <clears throat> and it makes it so you cannot heal, and you hardly can regenerate ma uh, power. Ah! The, uh, the boss theme and the theme of the Dreadfather and Corrupt were playing, meaning that this is the boss before. You see what I mean? This used to only play... Wait, are you serious? So even though I can attack the back row, he used fucking protect so I can only attack him. I hate these fucking enemies. So this was the theme that in the original game would only play if you were fighting corrupt or dreadful. And look, oh, it actually does hit the wall. Let me So the upside, all of the, uh, all the music is still here. Like, again, this is the theme of the Corrupt War, and it's so fucking awesome. Although, considering it don't longer plays purely for the final boss, I guess it has that, it doesn't quite have a sense of urgency as much as, um, the previous game did. I mean, seriously. If you've played Book of Dread or the original, I've never actually gotten to the end of the original one, so I don't know if we still have a thing. But basically, if you got to Corruptor or Dreadfather for the first time, you'll know how tense that bad battle is. Oh, great. So he can resurrect them. So, yeah, um, when it's just now applied to the exact. Saying, like, like the first time it happened, I genuinely only knew that it was a boss because it had a different character model and because the theme was out of court. <sighs> Why didn't I attack the Necromancer? I fucking forgot that he was no longer unprotected. Wait, was that? No. There's this really good environmental thing that sometimes happens where um, you uh, massively gain like uh, mad, like power regeneration. Which one has more health? You do. Well, you were about to go. <sighs> so what do I have to say about this game? Well, it's it does better in some aspects, but. Uh, than that, not really. If I remember right, yeah. Explain why Smite no longer smites the undead. Holy Light is now the only ability that specifically affects the undead. Well, uh, ooh, I've never seen that before, obviously, because I never got to this guy. God, this necromancer is a lot of fucking health. And he looks more like a witch. Oh, also, the 
Barbarian's ability from the previous game is now the Warrior's ability. Basically what that does is, if this guy wasn't here, then my Warrior would be able to charge and hit him for massive damage. So as long as he doesn't resurrect the him, I'll just be able to show it off. There were also some other changes, like, uh, the Neophytes, they no longer instantly sacrifice themselves. They, uh, they usually only, for the most part, they usually do that as a little last resort sort of thing. I just want to stun him. There we go. It's really hard to tell when they're stunned, because all that happens is they're a little reticle at a time, then goes white. So, let's finish him off with charge! Wow, so impressive. Ah, they all leveled up. I really hate what they did to the leveling up system. Well, for one, you only have one skill point now. Well, like one attribute point, rather than three. Two, to be able to level up at all, you're forced to both buy a skill and level up one of your attributes. Like, watch this. See? So I have to choose, uh... Let's see, last time I used Endurance, so I'll go with Strength. I want to see something. Nope. And then you're forced to, uh, choose one of these, even if you're not gonna fucking use them. So I'm just gonna go with Bloodlust for the hell of it. Uh, I think I did Intellect last time, so I'll go Endurance. Why would I want that if it only, if it, for the most part, harms my allies? What the fuck is that? Never saw it. I don't know, that looks better. Uh, yeah, he needs, actually, I think I went Endurance, I mean, Dexterity last time, so he will do that. And as always, only invest in dexterity for the rogue. It, it looks like he ex his back exploded. And it's still just as annoying that you can only use that ability if they're stunned. Wait a minute. In the last one, didn't it like do some damage and it had a high chance to instantly kill? That looks cool, so I'll just go with that. Let's see what items we got. Probably shittier than our own current. Because the level, the item scaling is really utter shit. What I mean by that is, um, the enemies become way too powerful, way too fast for the items you get. Because, hmm, that gives quite a bit more armor, but it gives less... You know what, it's not worth it. You get... You get items that are too weak, for the most part, for the level that you're currently at. Hmm. Yeah, this is definitely better. It also takes a really long time for it to auto-equip when you double-click. I don't know why. I don't think 33 damage might be worth it. Alright, fuck it. Come on! <sighs> God damn. Wait a minute, I just realized something. Backpack, rucksack, loot bag, satchel. Aren't satchels, like, really small? Like, virtually, like, sort of purses almost, like coin purses size. Ah, well, so that was the boss. I have no idea how to, wait, is that it? Ah. So that was our only objective. Oh, did I mention that now you can't go down a floor until you finish all objectives? Killing that necromancer was actually what I had to do. There was a really big problem in the cultist level where I had to, uh, like, do three different things before I could go to the, uh, exit. Real fast, I want to see, uh, I want to see what these guys are first, and then I'll go to the next one. Oh, shrine. 
All right, so there's high ground, so for the hell of it. See, that's something I meant. Loose footing, minus 15 quickness. Loose footing. So what the hell are these things? Ghouls. Hmm. Why do they look like some sort of weird Japanese spirit or something? My god, they have high speed! That's great to know. So they're gonna be able to go from. Oh, and uh, flash powder. Wait, did it always affect only one character? I think it may have, but I don't know. Come on. I wanna show you something, but it mushroom. Lights because I assume these are undead. Yes. So that's the only thing that uh, does anything against them. All it does is turn undead, which slows them and makes them do lower damage. Yeah. One thing I like is that it shows when an attack will, in fact, kill an enemy. Is it my? Yeah, it is. Also, do you think this is a little OP? Plus 15% critical chance, plus 100% critical damage. Oh, percent. Actually, you know, I can examine that. Um, so, uh, his critical damage is 150% normal damage, and he only has 1% chance. Which is weird. You'd think all different classes would have different, like, percentages of that. His, well, hers, actually, is she has a 16% critical chance, 250% critical damage. And the reason I mistook it for a him is because there are literally no different models. The only difference between male and female characters is females have a more feminine face, which you can't see from their helmet. Even though there's a female character, a female cultist, who I swear to god, has woman-like features, but scrolling down in the comments, the creator of this game actually said, Oh, I uh, couldn't afford to. That was the excuse. Couldn't afford to draw, like, little bumps in the armor or something for her breasts. Just let that sink in for a moment. That's how much care we're dealing with here. <sighs> so... This is an... Why didn't he heal? This is an alright game. Like, it, it did some things better. But for the most part, it wasn't worth the wait. Like, now that they force you to do this shit. Alright, so now let's get the fuck out. Let's see what's on the next floor. <coughs> yes, I do. This, uh, actually, that what I want to get this quest done with though, so I can show you the character roster. Come on, did I find it already? What the hell are they? Oh, I must not have because there's another one. Oh, we just have to find levers here, so all right, that's weird. Fuck fighting the undead, especially since we have a cleric in the party. Is that a samurai? Or does he just have a weird mask? There's only one banshee here, we can probably take her. So yeah, this is... It's an alright game. On its own. But, ooh, this is the one I meant. That is a really good one to have. Come on. And luckily she was stupid enough not to be there. So, yeah, it's an alright game, but it's not a good, it's, it's, a, it's a good, it's a decent game, but it's not a particularly great uh, entry in the Monster's Den series. 
I can see why this is the last game in the series. I killed it on arrival. And, of course, Rogue has to be useless and didn't get to use the ability. I have no idea what happens when you die. Because I've never actually died. When did I get the uh, Legend Spark? Huh. Um... One really th fucking annoying thing, though, is, um... Well... You know how, like, when you're starting a new game in Book of Dread, and therefore the, uh, normal Monsters Den, that you could choose, like, these presets to make the game more difficult but increase your score? You're now forced to use one of them. You're forced to have, of course, the difficulty, and then you're forced to have one of the uh, extra things that make the game more difficult. The one it's set to, uh, by default, is you lose XP when you die. At least the, uh, there's, there doesn't seem to be... I think it's only for party deaths, though, so that's a good thing. Do you see how many enemies I'm fighting on just the second quest? There was also, uh, multiple groups of six just on the first quest, so... Yeah, they went all out to make this game harder, it seems. And not in a good way. What the fuck are you? You a lich? Yeah, you are. Something kind of... weird and a bit annoying is, for some reason, all the character models on the enemy side seem to look towards the camera. I mean, look at that lich. He's definitely looking straight at us. And the void beast, you know, looks really annoying. Acolyte cultist summon. Yeah, they, uh, They now, uh, They now look directly at the fucking screen, too. I don't know why we keep getting heightened senses from being struck. I really can't tell you why. Come on. I forgot that he had a was open, so I could have charged him. Uh, so you know what? I'm actually gonna stop this. And I'm gonna start it back up again once I, after a really long time that I fucking finished this quest. So as I can show you the, uh, like the character selection screen. Okay, real fast, I just wanna show you the fucking ability the Lich has now. That seems kind of overpowered and unfair. This cause Necrosis. Seven damage inflicted per second. You can't heal, you can't fucking steal health. And has lower uh, heal strength. It has lower strength to be healed. Way to make an already fucking cheap enemy be even cheaper, guys. Just for pass. I also want to say, just after I had uh, shown the. Uh, why didn't I set him as that? Maybe that's why I didn't do some Um, Just after I turned the thing off, I wanted to turn Bandit Cam off. Um, after showing the process thing, this guy. A, an ability that made him completely immune to damage. Well, not completely, but he took 98% less damage, so basically, even my warrior with power attack wasn't able to bring him down, even a slight slower health. <sighs> Another thing I forgot to mention is you can no longer just use enchantments on any random item. They now have uh, slots. So as you can see, I can't add any to this because I already added one. I didn't fucking know that because I don't usually look at these. By the way, the things I thought were uh, the guys wearing weird masks, they're actually vampires. And they look more like Nosferatu than uh, they did in the last game. Okay, so I bought more bags. Okay, so just just watch this, alright? Auto looting. Th when you when you loot, uh, like okay, I have. All right, so I have this one set to only gain. Like when I auto loot, it's set to only gain useless items, gray level. This one is set only for magical items. This one is set only for um for uh, storied items, which are blue level. But the auto loot didn't work. It didn't add these fucking things that 
I just looted to the rucksack where it was supposed to go. Can I drag it over? Okay, I can at least do that, but wow. So, even though it specifically is meant for auto loot, it seems that it doesn't let you auto loot with uh, more than your base backpack. God, that was a bad lag spike. I wish I was recording what just happened. I was just exploring the dungeon, and um, then I magically just appeared in the middle of blackness, and then when I tried to move back to the normal spot, um, my character's auto walked towards the entrance, and I had to use a scroll of deception to get past these guys from where I was so they wouldn't see me. And now I'm forced to fight them. Also, the bone, bone horror looks nothing like I thought its body would. It looks kind of derpy. I had to issue a full pirate retreat because I didn't want to fight this battle. And it says a retreat takes one whole turn. It took 17. Well, not exactly 17, but... Okay, see? I was... Uh, I really hope it won't do it again. I mean, I really fucking hope. And my warrior died. Come on, where's the revival potion? So, I was just exploring around here. I tried to go into this room. And then it magically appeared me over trying to go to over here. So you see the problem. I do actually right now want to specify that uh, it actually didn't take like 17 turns. I was just kind of saying that as an example because I wouldn't be fucking surprised. But basically, full party retreat says it will only take one turn for each of your uh, characters. It took like three or four for each. Okay, I think I found the boss. Also, there's now worthless shrines that only give experience rather than items. Even though the ones that were giving quote-unquote items were only giving... ...these things. And the only thing it does is make it to have the legendary look and uh, gives you an extra salon for enchantment. Which is com kind of stupid seeing how it takes up an enchantment slot anyway. Oh, and real fast word of warning, don't buy glow dust, because it doesn't actually particularly tell you what it does. Um, I thought that it was like going to color my cape, but no, it gave it a glow that used up an enchantment slot, which I didn't know it was going to do. Just, just word of warning real fast. So I think I found the boss. Must have, there was the uh, stairwell. You're on high ground. Alright, let's see what this guy is. Yep. Ooh, a death knight. And he actually looks a lot like my death knight that I had in World of Warcraft. Weird. Oh, and he starts half full, so he's gonna be able to get initiative. That's really fair. Yeah, so you can hear. Oh, and he just pushed me back. As you can hear, this means it's the boss. So, we'll just do this fight. And then we'll, uh... Then we'll exit this quest. Well, I will hope that I can exit the quest, but I will still be able to come back to it. I doubt it, though. Oh my god, do you see how much damage resistance this guy has? And how much health? First things first, I have got to stop that fucking lich. Because if he uses the cross, it's basically dead. Martial expertise. Oh, wow! So, the te technically the third boss of the game. Well, technically, maybe the fourth. Uh, automatically has an ability that makes him basically 50% higher ability to strike 
gives plus 35% damage, has a, will absolutely stun the next strike, and has high armor piercing. So apparently, the way that he decided to make this game better was to make the enemies and inventory more cheap and hard to deal with. I wonder if I can do this. Yes, I can. If I don't take him out, we're gonna have some more trouble. When is my fucking player gonna be able to go? Has he been able to go once, I think. Wow, anyone who attacks him has a near complete chance of being stunned. Really fucking fair. to speed this up. Okay, I just had to second. Did you see that? Even attacking at a fucking range with magic still caused him to get stunned. Uh, just why?
Yes. Abort. So, this is the uh, character roster. As you can see, these are the uh, four that I usually have because they're the best. But then you have different professions, like, this is the alternate- What the fuck? Wait, this one was named Blade, but I named the Champion Blade. What the fuck? That's the alternate Cleric, and Sorcerer, Conjurer, another type of Rogue. I just realized there's three types of Rogues. There's three types of rogues, but only two of any other type. Huh. <sighs> so, like, if, say, I choose, uh, the sorcerer, then I can look at character and see what, what... Um, hold on. Uh, there you go. So you can see what stances he starts with, what abilities he starts with, and what he can get. So I really like that. You can see their base stats. They have a 20% chance to use a skill for free automatically. Huh. Huh. So, I guess that's the game in a nutshell. It's alright. But, well, just like how Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts is a good game, but just not a good Banjo Kazooie game, this is a good, decent game, but isn't all that great when it comes to Monster Den game. I am out. Ah. Goodbye. Alright, with uh, the new party, I was able to go back to the cultus. And, as you can see, there are female models, and yet the game's creator claimed that he couldn't afford to make female models.